Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cloud Show. It's been a while, but I'm so glad to be back. And we have, of course, another really good topic for you today on the Cloud Show. It's going to be about observability. We're going to explain a little bit about what that is and why that is important for your application. And, you know, whom better to talk to about observability than an actual observability advocate? And so this uh, guest star of the Cloud Show today is Martin Twitz. Well, hello there, Martin. Hello. Long time no see. It's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> a couple of weeks, yeah. We get to see each other in multiple places. We are we are fortunate to be in the sort of the speaker circuit. <laughs> yes, yes. Many, many countries. <laughs> Indeed. Countries and continents. So and time zones, <laughs> most importantly. <laughs> yes. So um, tell us first uh, for the audience here, who are you? What do you do? You're an observability advocate. Yeah, so um, I, I've been doing sort of observability type things, monitoring that kind of stuff for many, many years. I currently work for a company called Honeycomb as a principal developer advocate for whatever that means. I believe it means I've swapped my Visual Studio IDE for PowerPoint, so staying inside the Microsoft ecosystem, but different IDEs. Um, so so yeah, I, I, I basically just go around the world spreading the good word about observability and open mm -hmm. telemetry and trying to get people to really think about what they do in terms of yep. understanding their systems. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, and you're, wait, you're based out of UK, right? Manchester, the north. <laughs> Manchester, oh, wow. I've never been to Manchester. I would like to go to Manchester. Uh, you need to invite me. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 put on a conference at some point, and uh, you're, right, on the, right. you're, you're, you're on the list, the good list. <laughs> All, right, good, good. All right, brilliant. So observability. There is this there is this like growing kind of like narrative that observability observability and and sort of monitoring cost the cost of observing your application in the cloud. It's it's growing. It's getting like unmanageable. What like what do we do? Like sometimes companies can be like okay, but of just observing our application is costing as much or even more than the actual cost of running the application. What is what this is wrong? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's it's something that we're we're hearing more and more because, I mean, if you think back to, I mean, I'm, I'm presuming age um, um, and the audience here, but you know, when we when we used to build systems back in the day, um, it was box line box cylinder. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was the database and our application, and then users hitting our application. It was fairly yeah. simple. You know, and, and throw physically, some... physically, these two things were connected with a piece of cable that much, right? You had one yes. rack, yeah. which was the web, <laughs> the web tier, and a bit of cable that much, and then the, the, the another rack with the, with the database server. Hundred percent. You know, and, and the the thing is, when we when we talked about oh, we've got accidental scale, it was because our local computing provider had a sale on, and we went and bought more servers. You know, that that was how we scaled accidentally. Yeah. We 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 didn't have accidental scaling, and yeah. the thing is, what we're doing now is we're trying to replicate the same things that we did back then. Mm. In systems that are dynamically scalable, the oh. sprawl of those applications. Everybody's seen the the Monzo microservices diagram, which you know that big world of interconnected dots everywhere. Exactly. And and as these applications grow, what we had back then was relatively cheap, but now it's getting so much bigger. And well, yes, potentially the cost to observe it is yeah, is think, you know exponentially uh, large. A thing that we've been saying on this show before, which actually applies here as well, is that you know the 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 biggest issue, the biggest problem that can ever hit your application is drum roll, please. It's success, right? Because it was never architected for that. <laughs> and and now you have a problem. I mean, I'd I'd argue we don't architect for failure either, but <laughs> fair enough. Um, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and I mean, I I had a friend um, many many years ago, which was like the start of when Lambda started becoming a thing. So mm -hmm. functions as a service, where we we basically pay for the amount of compute cost of every request that comes through, and he built a system, 
and he ended up on the front page of it was like Y Combinator or Hacker News or one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and his search system was built on top of Lambda. And what he got was a ton of people who were coming into his application, searching for stuff, but not buying anything. Ah. And all of a sudden he was paying for all of these requests to be like really rapid. And they were rapid. His site was fast. But the problem was that he wasn't getting any revenue out of it. Wow. So his costs ballooned up. Um, without actually getting any revenue in. No value, yeah. And I think that goes to a lot of what we're doing right now, which is we're not aligning our costs to yeah. our value. We're not saying that, well, our observability costs are X, which means that we're getting Y value out of those observability costs. We're not, not really. thinking, we're not thinking about them, that we're not being intentional about them. We're not saying that, yeah. well, we're doing this so that we get Y benefit out the back okay. of it. Just so throw if, other if, stuff together. If we stick uh, just for a second uh, longer on the problem side of things here, like how bad can this get? If it gets really bad, what have you seen? Sixty-five million dollars a year in <laughs> pure observability costs was the thing that came out last year um, from a particular provider and one of their customers. It was in the news. I'm not going to mention the companies involved, but it's Googleable. $65 million a year on yeah. observability. So I, you have to know what you're doing here. You have to you have to understand what are we measuring? Why are we measuring that? What's the outcome of this? And how much do we like tune the 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 knobs on the all all of the measurements? So not exactly. Oh. We don't have to know what we're doing. We have to be conscious about what we're doing. Now, it's not that we need to hire a load of experts who know observability um, because you can't hire me at the moment. I'm working. I've got a job. Busy, yeah. um, <laughs> but it's not that you need to hire people who know observability. What you need to do is you need to think and get your, um, your entire organization thinking about observability in terms of what do I need in order to understand whether things are working in production? And then monitor those things. So, yeah. you know, we say monitor the monitors, if you like. You, you're essentially monitoring the cost of these things in terms of the value that you're getting out of them. Yeah. You know, if if you're paying $65 million a year, are you getting $65 million a year of value out of that product? Because if you are, it is not too expensive. It is just the right of, of expensive if yeah. you're getting that amount of value out of it. If you're earning, if your revenue is a billion, then you're probably good. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we we look at sort of observability costs and sort of high performing teams at around ten percent of your infrastructure costs. Mm -hmm. um, between ten and twenty percent, we've seen a little bit higher, um, but most of them fall in that sort of region in the ones that we talk to as to yeah. those higher performing teams. It's that when they get ballooning out of control, because if you think if my infrastructure is costing me, like you say, a billion, if it's then costing me, I don't know, what's, um, it depends on whether we're talking an English billion or an American billion, you know, let, let, let's just say it's 100 million um, is 10%. If we talk about staffing costs, if we talk about licensing costs for software, we talk about compute and storage and all of those things, if that adds up to a million dollars, if you go to 10 billion, yeah. And all of a sudden it's costing you a billion. You're still talking 10%. Yeah. Now, when you start to get to those numbers, that, that gets a little bit ridiculous in my opinion. Um, but but ultimately it's just about being conscious yeah. about what proportion of expense is going just on watching a system yeah. when that system potentially isn't making any money. Like if we're Correct. watching it in the middle of the night and nobody's using the software, we've got no background processes running. Mm -hmm. Is that actually viable if that's a, a cost that we're having to pay? But it's just about being conscious about it. And that's where I see a lot of people like, oh, I just installed an agent from this provider and they just provide me with dashboards. But do you look at the dashboards? No. Okay, so they're providing no value. No, no, no. The, the, the dashboards mean that the managers think that we're doing things. So that's a value. Um, <laughs> that's a valid, that's a valid value. <laughs> exactly. But it's all about being conscious about it. Like I when we're when we're implementing observability, if we're implementing open telemetry, or even if you've got you know, a, a vendor SDK, mm. um implementing it by saying these are the things I want to know, these are the things that would be useful to know. Yep. Instead of just going the ops team have just installed an agent and then I've got some pretty dashboards. There's this it's agents are really good getting started. I get a bit of value, 
but you really need to like be then conscious about like add more context. Mm. I have a few blog posts that I put out recently around this kind of topic around okay. just being proactive and thinking about it, thinking about how we sample data rather than using metric data, right. sampling properly with um, using intelligent and dynamic sampling and just essentially being conscious of the ecosystem that's around you instead yeah. of just thinking I can install an agent. Well, yeah, if you're installing an agent, I don't want to think about it. You're going to pay a lot more money because they're going to have a buildup of data that you, is useful, useless right. for you, you just all that kind of stuff. Switch it on. It might be collecting lots and lots of data to a large cost. And maybe you're not even looking at a fraction of that. hundred percent. I mean, we collecting it. So right. we did an analysis recently of a customer that was, I think, 10% of their data cost was log lines that said, here. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I, love it <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> they might have, there might have been one log line here in the code base and it was really valuable to them. I highly doubt it, though. Um, and this is just feel that they're in the present. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it doesn't say past, and you know, it, it, oh, it, <laughs> so now. exactly. Yeah. And that, and like I say, it's just about being conscious about it. it's being mm -hmm. constantly questioning whether you've got the right data as you're adding new functionality, yep. you're adding new data, you're removing old data. But it's, and I don't want to, I, I hate the term lazy in this context. But it's more absent-minded, I think, yeah. to, I don't want to have to worry about that. Ops is somebody else's responsibility. Yeah. I'm not the one using the telemetry. Okay. I don't really care. Um, yeah. I just use my logs locally. Somebody else can figure out the rest. Figure and that's rest. where that big yeah. ballooning cost generally so, comes from. Yeah. So the, the challenge is, like, before we ran the application, like, locally on a, on a rack somewhere, whatnot, maybe we were collecting logs in a, in a log file. Or, or maybe even a log database or something like that. You know, brilliant. We have a database. That's awesome. You were collecting logs in old ways. Now you move to the cloud and you get other scale. You get distributed applications. You have to start using uh, some kind of a service that is a, a logging service. And now it's, it's fair to pitch who you're working for, but can you just like describe how would you go about this if you want to if you want to start doing this the right way or start doing it at all. Like how? What's this? What's the high level process of getting onto the right track of of observability? Step one is open telemetry. Um, yep. Open telemetry, for those that don't know, is a project that the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, and it's um, I think well last year it was the number two project behind this thing they do. I think containers or something i don't know apparently it's a yeah. big thing kuba, kuba something yeah, um, yeah. but it's it's this big project anyway they took on this thing called open telemetry and it's a vendor agnostic um way of generating telemetry data in your application mm -hmm. and transmitting it to a back end yep that is step one because it means as application developers we don't need to care about where the data is going we can care about what data is generated. We can care about how that data is generated, mm -hmm. at what points and what it contains. And we can really curate that data, make it really useful. We can also use things in the uh, Microsoft context. There's a new product called Aspire, which allows you to view all this data locally before you start going up into the cloud, which is, again, a really cool way of doing things. Yeah. But you start with open telemetry. Okay. And then you start to think about, well, where should I put it? But that's when you start to think about, how do I want to use my data? Because open telemetry can send it to multiple places. Uh -huh. You can say, I will send some of my data to a cloud cost platform that will be able to say, should I scale my servers? Should I scale them differently? Should I have more bigger servers versus smaller servers? What's my cost going to be over the next six months? That's a use for telemetry data. Yeah. You might send another one to production debugging systems which are my system's going wrong right now. I need to know what's happening. Very low retention, but fast querying and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you might send some other data to a long-term storage, like a seam analysis tool for security. Yeah. yeah. You might send some other data to yeah. operational because analytics. Compliance and security reasons, right? We have, to, we, we have to keep this data for a long time. We're never going to look at it, but you know, apparently somebody says we have to keep that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know we don't want to we don't want to say no to security because no. I mean they did such a good job with the uh, uh, AZ vulnerability, didn't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but but you know all of this idea is if you start with the developers owning what is important, yeah, and the developers who write the application understand what is important. The infrastructure engineers who build your infrastructure they know what's important for their data. Mm -hmm. Make them own that. Yeah. And then you look at where you're going to send it and work out how you're going to use it. Uh -huh. And once you've got all of that, that's when you can glue those two things together because the decision of where it goes and the decision of how to do all of that data are completely yeah. disconnected. <clears throat> and that's how you start. Start with that. Start with auto-instrumentation by just installing an agent. Just know that that's step one on a journey. Yeah, a yeah, continuous yeah, yeah. journey of yeah. keeping to evolve that data. If your software never changes, you don't need to change your telemetry. As your software changes, you change your telemetry. Yeah, that's, that sounds that sounds like solid advice. I always say also that you should have something for the Excel people, the bean counters that that you know <laughs> moves some needle that moves the business. That's something that is interesting for the business owners. Like is that number of line items sold or number of new customers or something something that matters to them and put that on a dashboard for them so they have something pretty to look now that's different that yeah. just to be clear that is different that is operational analytics data yes. now yes. and this is the the difference between that and telemetry because mm -hmm. telemetry data we sample we only store a portion of that data in order for us to know what the whole would look like from an op from a how is my system running perspective okay whereas number of items sold you don't want to guesstimate that. You know, you don't want to say, oh, well, I think we sold about 100. I just, I stored, I stored one and said there was 100 of them. Yeah, uh, like, <laughs> um, whereas operational analytics, like number of users, number of sessions, number of, if these are really important to be accurate, they're a different set of data. Of course. And that yeah, should yeah. come from your persistent stores, your operational analytics, yeah. throw it into Databricks, throw it into um, all of the tools that are available in the cloud to crunch massive numbers and build those static reports that people are they can see. collected using the same type of technology? Um, no. No, because if you're wanting to know how many new customers we got, well, you go to the database that shows all your orders and say, you know, count distinct of customer. You know, you want to know how many orders you got. Well, it's, well, count of orders. Yeah. You know, that's, it's a very different type of data because you want it very, very accurate. Makes sense. Um, and you also don't care about it right now. Like, you can throw it into a data warehouse. You can throw it into a star scheme and go through an ETL process. You don't need that right now. It's yeah. okay for it to be an hour out. Now, the difference is in telemetry data, you care about right now. Like, yeah. you the amount of times where we've we've seen solutions out there that take five to 10 minutes to generate your telemetry. Now, I've been a practitioner for yeah. many, many years. I can tell you if I'm in an outage, mm -hmm. five minutes is an eternity to know whether the issue has been fixed. Very long time. Angry customers are hammering the support system and, and your boss is, is, is hovering over you. And that's a long time to wait. Like I press the button, I really, we just have to wait for the telemetry to come through and see what happened. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And and that's the thing. That's the difference between those two. Your yep. reports that yeah. your, your business want, they're okay to be a little bit longer. The mm -hmm. ones where you're doing things um, that where you're trying to do things a little bit more now, you need rapid analysis. You need rapid querying. You need fast ingest. Yep. You need that data to be. And this is why it costs more money for those kind of systems, because the use case is I need it right now. Yep. What you don't care about, though, is did something go wrong six months ago? Like, yeah. you know, if somebody's but, debugging an issue on their production system that happened yeah. six months ago, I'd really like to talk about their incident response processes because I think there might be a failing somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, any, any live system or a system that is, is, is evolving continuously would not be anything like what the telemetry showed that many months ago and exactly must, must have released new things since then so yeah. telemetry that it is now useless entirely exactly you know you're you've you've probably had 50 60 70 
8,000 commits between then and now, the system sure. looks no, the code looks no different. The system might look the same, but the code paths, the optimizations, everything else will look very, very different. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's one of these key points is people try to unify things in one tool. It's like, I've got this one sure. tool that'll serve the business people with their KPI dashboards. It'll serve the developers for production debugging. It'll serve the infrastructure engineers for looking at scaling. It'll serve the uh, bean counters. I'm, I hate that term, but the people who really deeply care about cost and analysis of cost and attribution of cost, yeah. which is a very, very valid role. Um, yeah. I'm just saying that because they pay my wages and they're the people who pay all of our wages. So they're very, very nice people. Um, <laughs> um, but if you look at one tool for all of them, you've got a problem. If you look at one data source for all of them, that's very different. Mm -hmm. If you've got one pipe of data that's just going to different systems that yeah. have different use cases, different yeah. cost profiles, different user bases, that's different the key, visualizations, yeah. that's, that's the key. key. Yeah, that's the key. So some, some stuff goes into one pipe, and that's for long-term storage, for security, whatnot. Some stuff goes into, this is right now debugging, uh, quick, 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 um, different different streams. And now we only mentioned two. There's There, there can be multiple. There's an infinite amount of places that you can put it. You can put it for your own long-term storage, for the um, short-term storage, for analytics, for operational analytics, for financial analytics. It's just, you know, separate those two roles. Talk to the people who generate the data. Give them the freedom to generate the data in whatever format they want using OpenTelemetry. Fantastic. That's That's... The summary, really, uh, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you, uh, you know, uh, summarizing it all for us and making it like really understandable. Because this, I think, was a was an excellent episode. I want to thank you so much for being on the Cloud Show, Martin. No uh, problem, anytime. I'd love to meet up with you again as soon as possible somewhere. I'm sure that's going to happen. In Manchester at the conference, I'm going to arrange for you, just oh, for yeah. you, just me right. and you. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brilliant. Uh, thank you, everyone in the audience, for watching The Cloud Show. Uh, this has been the show tonight with, with uh, Martin Twaits. I think we're still live. Are we still live? <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> yeah, pretty much.